Hi everyone, David Maley, and today we're going to do something really cool here at Tech Know How. We're going to go and show you how to read from a CSV file, how to write to a CSV file, and then do some other really cool stuff along with it. It's a pretty quick and easy thing to do. We're going to use pandas. So if you don't know what pandas is, it's a library in Python, and of course, obviously, we're using Python and Jupyter Notebooks, as you can see on my screen. Um, so what we're going to do first is import pandas. If you don't have it installed, you're going to use this code right here to load in your pandas with pip3. Okay, so once it's loaded in, you're going to do import pandas, then you're going to go and take your file. In this case, I'm using the diamonds data set. It's a mispriced diamonds data set I found on the internet, so it's not my own data. You can look up mispriced uh, diamonds data set to find it. And then once you've downloaded it it's from your local file, and you just use this pandas.read underscore CSV and then your file location with single quotation marks, not double quotation marks. If you use double quotation marks, it won't work. Okay. Then once you have it in, you put print DF and it shows up right below. What that is, that is your head and tails. If you're used to that, the first five and the last five, as you can see here. Now it's not by size, it's not in order. It's data set of lowest to highest. It looks like it is here as you're going from 0 0.2, 0 0.3 carats on up to 0 0.7, 0.8, but that's not the case because there's obviously diamonds in this data set that are bigger than two, three, four, five carats, and there's different clarities and vastly different prices. So it just gives you a little quick snapshot of the data. Okay. So once you have that, then we want to look at our data a little bit, do a little data exploration, a little have a little fun with it. I don't want to just go and read from a CSV and then write it back. That'd be kind of boring. So what we're going to do is we're going to bring in matplotlib, matplotlib in line like this, and then import pyplot from it as plt. See how I did that? Dot pyplot as plt. Once you've done that, and if you don't have matplotlib in your thing, again, go back and load it in like this, okay? So once you have that loaded in, then we're going to create a scatter plot based on the data. So we can look look at our data see what we got we're dealing with here so we use this right here to create the scatter plot looks like a lot of code it's really not okay so the first part is to create the scatter plot itself first line here we've got the elements of carrot versus price and then our color that's c equals price and our data equals df we could add size as s i didn't want to because it kind of messes up the data here i just want to make it something quick so you've got c is color and if we wanted to add it s would equal uh, whatever value you want for size. If you wanted the plots of different sizes, I didn't want to do that here. Um, plot X label and Y label. That way you have your uh, labels on the sides here, price and carrot, as you can see right there. Your X label obviously goes down here and your Y label obviously goes over here. Um, then we've got the title, scatter plot of diamonds by price and carrot. And that goes right here. And that makes it look like a professionally done graph and we've got grid you don't have to have the grid to be true that's where it, these the lines here it makes it easier to see where the data is you know it, does it lie between seven above 17,500 or 15,000 yes we can see it from the sides here but it's much easier to see with the grid turned on and we just got plt dot show obviously if you don't hit that you won't or enter that you won't see this you have to show your graph and there's your graph it's inline. It looks really cool. That's what the matplotlib inline does. It lets you have it in line with your code instead of off to the side or something else. Um, so now that we've done that, we've looked at our data real quick. What I want to do is I want to implement a change. Obviously, we don't want to just read data and write it. We want to. What if we wanted to change some things? What if we want to add some columns to this data? So in this case, what we're going to do is we're going to implement a 20% price reduction. This is like a real business use case, right? So in businesses, they do this all the time. They want to keep up with competitors. They want to offer a coupon. They want to include or put a price reduction in. Maybe there's some additional cost as the price, uh, buying price of some of these items goes up. So then they have to institute that. In this case, we're doing a 20% price reduction to compete better with online competition, which in this case would be like Blue Nile and companies like that that sell at a lower price over the internet. So we're going to create two new columns, new price and price reduction, right? So to do this, all we have to do, because we already created our data frame, right? 
So if I go back here again and show you, we got DF as our data frame. We created that right here, off straight off the data without any real changes to it. So next we're going to do is DF, and then in brackets, your name of your, with single quotes, the name of the new column. So in this case, price is going to be built off, our new price is going to be built off of price, because we got price, which is right here, right? We got price, and we're going to multiply that simply by 0 0.80, which would be, I'm going to do a 20% price reduction, so I want 80% of what it was. So that's how I did that one. And then we'll have price reduction, which is the same, the opposite. So if one is the new price, the 20% would be the uh, price reduction. So that's, you know, the price times 0 0.20. And then we just show up by hitting DF. And in this case, by hitting DF, I wanted to show you that versus doing the print DF. The print DF shows it like this. And DF, because it's a in this data frame, shows a little bit neater. Shows different colored, uh, you know, opposite rows, which is kind of nice to see. But this shows the same data. Now the difference is I now have clarity or carrot clarity and price, but I also have new price and price reduction. So these are our new columns, and you can see that. So that's our new price with the twenty percent price reduction in it, and this is what they reduced it by to get to the price reduction. And you can check your data to see if you have the full everything went through. Obviously, 53,940 rows and three columns. Now we've got 53,940 rows and five columns at the bottom. You can see it here. Next, what we want to do is we want to print just to see, because this is what you would do in a real analysis. Um, what was the effect of, or what is the cost of the price reduction? So I want to look at the average price reduction per diamond. And then the total amount of the reduction, what's this actually going to cost? So what's the average reduction per diamond? Because obviously we've got different diamonds of different size, different clarities, different uh, uh, carrots, you know, things like that. And then we want to see what is the total cost of the reduction. So to do this, we just do this. Total equals DF of the price reduction dot sum, right? So I want to get the sum of the total. And then I want the average price reduction, which is the data frame price reduction the mean. See that right here, dot mean, gives us that. And uh, then we've got this, which is our print. Um, this is where it gets a little bit hard to see. You've got print, um, dollar sign, the curly brackets, colon, comma, dot 2F, curly brackets. That gives you uh, currency. And that's, that's the hardest thing for people to understand sometimes. All you got to do is use just like that. Dot format average price reduction. If you don't do this, you can leave this these two out here and just print it as is, and you just won't have currency. I wanted to see it as currency. So by doing it this way for both the average price reduction and the total, you get this. So we now know that our average price reduction per dime was 786.56. So that's the actual cost per or average cost per diamond. Obviously, some are higher. You can see it up here, and some are lower. And this clearly is not just the high and the low. There's higher numbers in between and lower numbers in between. Um, the total cost of this reduction, because there's 53,000 rows of diamonds, is $42,427,043.40. So that shows you when a big company, a large company, makes a change of 20%, 10%, or even 1%, that can be a huge implication and profits, especially if you've got a company like a grocery store or a grocery chain that operates with smaller margins. Um, now, obviously, we were going to read from CSV. We're also going to write it back. So now what we do is very simple. We have a pandas data frame. All we do is DF, which is our data frame, dot two underscore CSV, and then the new name of what it's going to be. So in this case, I'm using the same location. You see, I've changed it from mispriced diamond data set to mispriced diamond data set dash updated dot CSV. You don't want to write back over your original data. Okay, it could be dash one, underscore one, whatever you want it to be, backup, whatever you want to call it, just call it something else. And that'll write it back. So obviously, in the beginning, we brought it in with pandas dot read CSV, right? And then we put that in our data frame. And then in the end, when we're done doing all our little ads and adding our columns and making, you know, doing some cool stuff with it. And we just go data frame, or the name of our data frame, dot two underscore CSV, and the location of our new uh, data. 
uh, new CSV where we want it to go. And that's it. So you learned some pretty cool stuff today. We uh, read from a CSV, as you can see here. We then scatter plotted and looked at our data to see, you know, how does it lie? How does it look? How much, you know, and created a professional looking graph out of it, scatter plot. And then we added, based on a real business use case of what we would really do, some new columns with some new calculations just to figure out what would be a price reduction across the whole group. I could have put a filter on there and said only for, you know, one carat diamonds or something like that, or under one carat. We could have done that. We didn't. We just applied it to all of them. Then we looked at our data again, and we went and got our average price reduction per diamond and the total amount of this reduction, what this would cost the company to do, and we wrote it all to a CSV. That way we can give, you know, the marketing department or whomever it is the data behind this. Hope you had some, uh, found this interesting and uh, informational and had a great time watching this today. Please take a moment to subscribe, like, and share so you can keep receiving and watching all these great videos I'm going to be creating. Yes, I'm a data scientist for a large company. A, uh, uh, we are a Fortune Global 100 company, and this is the stuff that we actually use every day to provide uh, analytics, insights, and more to uh, executives at our various brands. Thanks again for watching. Please take a moment, subscribe, like, and share, and have a great day. Thank you.